Can I just interject here? Michelle from the mobility chair from the Panorama City North Neighborhood Council wants to talk about. Uh... Yep. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of people. You, you mentioned culinary workers who go from uh, the San Fernando Valley to the west side to, to work. Uh, we have a big problem. Uh, you know, it would be lovely if we had our, uh, our, our rail service uh, going, uh, going down uh, Van Nuys Boulevard, but the, the thing is, is that right now, uh, the 761 bus, which was the rapid bus for, uh, for, for Van Nuys that went all the way to uh, the west side, uh, it did not, uh, it, it, it got, uh, it, 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 it stopped, and all the uh, transportation that goes over the hill from the valley now goes on Sepulveda Boulevard rather than Van Nuys, except for the 788, which only goes on rush hours. And uh, there has never been 24-hour service between the, uh, the valley and the west side. I could tell you a story about being stuck in, uh, in Westwood and waiting for the, the, the next bus over the hill uh, at, uh, at Denny's uh, because of the fact that uh, a screening I went to uh, went on for a bit longer than I expected and I got stuck, stuck on the west side. You know, it's, you know, th there, were, there was a very bad decision made when the 761 was canceled and, uh, you know, it, we, we need a reliable link immediately over the hill from my neighborhood, Panorama City, which is extremely transit dependent and uh, has a lot of people who work in uh, uh, culinary, who work as janitors, who work, you know, doing things for the West Side, uh, and who perhaps do not, you know, cannot afford uh, to have uh, to, to 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 have uh, uh, right, right. Thank you so much. Right. Let me um, one other stop. I'm coming. One other stop. Larry Green. Larry Green represents Westfield, which I think is going to rename Topanga Westfield Way at some point just by sheer dominance. But they're also doing something with private sector dollars that we're seeing in other parts of the state. And so I wanted to interject that as, you know, the, the new transportation solutions, I think, are going to be a combination of public sector and private sector. Larry, would you tell to describe what you guys are doing? Sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, real pleasure to be here today. Um, Look, what we've done is really um, uh, tried to backfill the DASH system that was serving Warner Center for a long time and then was canceled. I love the idea about really looking at DASH and seeing you know, what we should be doing uh, with DASH going forward. But you know, we have a, uh, basically two shuttles that are now running around Warner Center. They're taking you from uh, you know, Westfield Topanga through our properties over to the Orange Line. And we're in an active dialogue with uh, office uh, uh, owners and managers along with the hotels about making stops at each of those locations to move people around. So each one of these trolleys is done in a very, we modeled it after the old red car, it's a very kind of architecturally very nice experience. The, the, the key that switches it all is that it has a technical aspect to it. So you actually can track the trolley on your iPhone it has a, a mapping device that allows you to track where the trolley is, when it's going to pick you up. Uh, so you've combined something that's architecturally very pleasing, but with the latest and greatest kind of Uber technology that allows you to track where that is. That obviously is a huge thing for our customer as they, you know, are deciding, you know, should they get that, you know, sandwich or not get the sandwich uh, based on they need to get back to work. Uh, and so that's really been a game changer. We're getting. And what is that costing you, Larry? How much are you putting into that? Well, we're putting about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars into that, uh, and, and that's the cost of the trolleys, and that's cost of riding it, uh, and that's projected over about a, a three-year period. 
you know, we're tracking that because we think that that'll be money well worth spending as we go out into the future. How many trolleys are there? We have two trolleys. Each holds about uh, 40 to 50 people. Uh, they are accessible, and, and uh, we're getting great usage. We're, we're getting about, you know, 75, 80 percent of filling those trolleys on, on a regular basis. And don't you have two trolleys in San Fernando also? Yes, please. Yeah, same thing. Great segue, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having us here today um, I think um, we're kind of realizing where our needs are really quickly um, and, and and here we have our vice mayor so Ballin as well with us here today as well um, obviously the Northeast Valley if you start looking at the map we're kind of the edge and um, in that edge you know is one of the areas where there's really no real transportation you know we have very few lines that go up to Mission College, and um, at times only one line goes up there. In the weekend, it just dies out, and that's throughout our whole area. Um, and even though our city is, you know, fairly small, we're 2.4 square miles. A lot of our users come out from the city of LA and use the transit inside the city. Um, and as I walk out there, speak to different um, community members or just bus users, I'm part of the uh, Northeast Valley um, Council of Gover uh, Council for our Metro as well. So I or said that whole area as well, and I get out there and talk to a lot of our commuters and users of the, the bus transportation. And what I find out is that usually, you know, safety is a huge issue for them, and being having the bus be there on time. And and if they don't have it on time, you know, they just say, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to take the car and, and and go out to Northridge. And and as we see, you know, a lot of our users from our Northeast Valley, Solmar, San Fernando, go to CSUN. But we don't have the transportation there, so we're we're stuck driving on the 405 or the streets and creating that congestion. You get out that 101, 118 freeway immediately coming out of our our area, and it's just you know stuck there, and then that affects not only that portion but everybody going to the to the west side. Which again, as um, one of the speakers, we definitely need a better connection. Obviously, going from our area out to the west side. You know, there's so many users. Uh, um, that would come out from a great means of transportation, meaning the rail system, anything going out to the west side. The jobs are out there. We have to be realistic. High paying jobs are out there in the west side. Even though that a lot of the jobs are moving to downtown LA, that's not always the case. You know, we have Santa Monica, we have- Councilman, what I understand from folks I've talked to in your, in your city is that so many of these, from the comadres come together and they all carpool. Yeah. It's downtown or the west side. They don't bellyache, they don't make a lot of noise, they just figure out they're self-sufficient and they figure out how to get themselves to work and, yeah. and they share on gasoline and costs. Yeah, and I agree with that, but I think that's as a responsible valley, we sh that shouldn't be the solution. The solution should be we should provide our transportation for all the users. You know, th th we shouldn't depend of others, you know. We but Bob, on that point, that's what we were saying earlier. They never had the option of transit. Right. So they figured out ways to do it when I think a lot of people would rather be using transit uh, than relying on a personal vehicle, but the options have not been there, particularly in the Northeast Valley. I didn't mean to say Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, I, I think as, as, as any, you know, we have a different demo, demo, demographics in, in that part of the area, you know, we have from very low, to, you know, to upper, you know, means of um, income. And for everybody, you know, if we had the option of transportation, we would be getting it. If, if I had an option to quickly go to downtown LA, from San Fernando would be great, but I don't. I know that we have the Metrolink, but again, we, we have a difficult, now we, we have to use a, a different means of method of pay. We can't use our tap cards there. So now we have to pay a different way, and it's a lot more expensive than a simple Metro. So that, that's a number one key, is how, how could we be better connected throughout our region? And, I, I, and forget about just the Northeast, throughout the valley. We, we have to stop trying to pin ourselves to each everybody's corner, you know, try, that's the worst thing we can do. We need to be able to have a solution for everybody, not just the Northeast, not the West Valley, just because you know we have to hang on. I know West Coast is here, but you know, we have to be able to commute throughout the valley and and be able to once we have that solved, be able to move from one point to another point, St. Gabriel Valley to you know West Side, everywhere throughout a region. I like to say that uh, all the pictures that come up, everybody's so youthful looking. <laughs> oh, there you go. 
Ra well, Randy Wood only has old pictures of us. <laughs> I'd like to say that we have the right leaders in place for success. I, I'm really excited about that. Uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed that the uh, Valley has been neglected as a whole when it comes to transportation. And uh, what Antonio was speaking to earlier about the carpooling, it has to do with economics. It really boils down to economics. And I uh, rode Metrolink for many, many years, and when the price of ca gas skyrocketed, you had more usage uh, on Metrolink. When the uh, price of gas goes down, then people want to go back to their cars driving alone, listening to the radio, and I have to listen to everybody on the train. Now, um, I, I'm really excited. Uh, Antonio's our transportation guru. Uh, he's the uh, area expert for our city. And uh, one thing is I believe, Bob, because you've been so great to San Fernando, that I think between you and I and the city and Antonio, we can come up with a solution for M Mission College immediately if you have the dollars for it. <laughs> so, I that like is always a big if. I like that. I like the if way Sylvia did that, Bob. Just, just what about that checkbook, buddy? That's what Jim said for the $165 million. Just wait for that checkbook. $40 From our, from our partners in Glendale. Martin? What do you think? Well, I thought you were, I thought you were going to take the microphone. Right? No, no, no. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, first, I, I would like to mention that uh, us in Glendale, we don't consider ourselves any different. Uh, we are part of San Fernando Valley. This is, a, this is an issue that is affecting everybody. It's not just San Fernando Valley. It's not just Glendale or Burbank. Our issues are not any different than what you have here. Uh, we have 50,000 people who visit Glendale every day to work. Uh, we have uh, 4,200 buildings are being built, units are being built in Glendale. Uh, traffic is going to be horrendous. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have, I have family members who live in, in Reseda and Northridge, and my, my kid is going to uh, apply for CSUN. So we know what, what, what the issues are. And the, 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 the magic, magic answer, I don't think anybody has a magic answer. And it was indicated we need to go to our priorities and our needs and, and uh, try to solve the, the biggest issues first. Um, I took the bus in Glendale. We have, we have B-lines and we have Metro. It's a drag. It, takes, it took me an hour to get from Glendale to here this morning. But even in our city, it's a drag to go from North Glendale to South Glendale. South Glendale is as dense as San Fernando Valley. It is as dense as South, San Fernando Valley. 130,000 people live in South Glendale only. So it's, it's like a global issue right now. Uh, my personal interest in is PRT, like Council Member Cortez indicated, uh, personal rapid transit. Uh, I am doing some research on my own. I haven't brought it to the council yet or didn't share much. You were the first to hear that from me. Uh, that uh, in Glendale, I think uh, we need to connect our, our transportation hub, Larry's Island Transportation Center, to our business district, which is not that far away from each other. Uh, we can come to San Fernando Road, connect to Brand, and connect the, 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 the car dealers to Americana, to, to Galleria, and to our financial district. And that will take that load away from uh, that downtown area that 4,200 units are being built. Another thing we're doing, we're talking about uh, you know, uh, the traditional parking lots. We are car culture. 80% 80, 80 of people are driving their cars because it's, it's easier to get from point A to B, because when you take the bus, you're stuck in the same traffic with a bigger vehicle. So we are building uh, parking structures away from downtown so our car dealers can park their cars, uh, their extra cars, in the new built parking structures so they won't use our structures in downtown area. So when merchants come and they can, or businesses come, they can use that. So uh, we are part of the same problem. What I would I'd like to learn more about is uh, high-speed rail and future plans uh, because no high-speed rail is meeting, but we can do that later. I understand. I understand. <laughs> but but uh, uh, unfair plug, I guess. But uh, but I, I guess Glendale is being bypassed from all the future plans as far as the rail 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 program. So. Thank so, you, Bartet. I have a student here from John thank Burroughs High School in Burbank who has a tap card, and you know we all. I just want well, here's a fellow who who's out there doing this. Let's hear from him and see what, what's your name. Eric Bo Eric Botan. Huh? Eric Eric Botan. Tell, tell us uh, how the transportation system serves you or doesn't, as the case may be. 
Um, sometimes the bus takes too long and I have to wait in the hot sun for like an hour or so. And sometimes the bus passes on the other side more often than my side. And I think that's kind of unfair. I get one bus and like the other side would have like five in less than 30 minutes. And I barely get one. You mean tell me you stand there at the bus stop for an hour and be waiting for a bus? Yes. Patient guy. Give him an A. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Certainly more patient than you and me, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Steph. absolutely. I'd never do that. Steph, you have some comments on the 405 you wanted to bring back? Yeah, the one thing we haven't talked about, I meant to bring it up when I spoke earlier, uh, is, is the 405 project, which is uh, a billion a billion dollars is already in Measure R, uh, which is a down payment on the 405 project. And I think the uh, Metro is, is working now on trying to figure out how a private-public partnership would work and uh, to, to connect Westwood or maybe even uh, Point South, the airport, uh, to uh, to Van Nuys uh, would be one of the most significant. We've been talking about Intra Valley uh, and Cross Valley, uh, but the connection of the valley to the, the other side of the hill uh, is a very important piece because uh, most a, a good a good percentage of people travel both from the city over to the valley to work as the economy of the valley continues to grow and Warner Center and other points uh, get developed, and vice versa from the valley over to the other side of the hill. Uh, judging from the volume of traffic on the 405, I think that would be a very welcome project. So that's something that we need to put front and center uh, in, in the discussion of our options. The, the other thing and the only other thing, and then I'll shut up, is uh, there's been reference made to bus-only lanes. Uh, and, and I want to throw that out uh, as a very serious, potentially uh, effective way to move people across the valley. We talk about CSUN. Uh, I believe Nordhoff is already a, uh, uh, as is Victory Boulevard, a number of the east-west streets are one of these tow-way, uh, you know, instant tow-way, don't even think of parking here during the peak hours lanes. Uh, if they could be reserved for bus only, uh, as we have done on Wilshire Boulevard. Now, I was a skeptic, but I was willing to take a chance on the Wilshire busway. And uh, I'm now at UCLA, so I keep an eye on it. Uh, it is working. And there's not been no revolution from the commuters. It's working. Uh, it would be huge on the San Fernando side of the hill, especially the east-west traffic, uh, moving buses at a very fast clip. So Chief Innovations Officer, this is another thing. Uh, I'll, I'll give you my, the Yaroslavsky axiom number four. When you're doing something revolutionary, call it a pilot program. <laughs> uh, does, nobody gets threatened. We tried the w Wilshire busway, a, a bus, bus lane as a pilot program. It, it's been going now for quite a few months, and it seems to be successful in probably the highest hanging fruit area of the, of the city. If you wanted to pick any place in the city where you want to try something like that, that would not have been the place, but we did it. So Super, I want to build on your, your notion about the, the Sepulveda Pass. We've got a comment here. Yeah. I'm Ron Ziff. Uh, first Vice President of Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council. Good morning, Zeth. Uh, I'd, I'd like to talk about a matter of priorities. And as you said, front and center, the Sepulveda Pass Valley to West Side problem is the biggest congestion problem in the entire United States. There are 800,000 daily car trips between the Valley and West LA. Our problem is every one of those 800,000 cars passes through Sherman Oaks. Uh, and don't make light of that. Our biggest complaint and one of the biggest complaints our councilman uh, David Rue gets is that the, the residents want to close their streets for morning traffic. Just like in Northridge, uh, they have problems with parking in Sherman Oaks, we have residential streets that are clogged with traffic because 405 is clogged with traffic, Sepulveda Boulevard is clogged with traffic, Ventura Boulevard, Woodman, Beverly Glen, every canyon, uh, they are all clogged with traffic. 800,000 cars a day. Five years ago, that was 600,000 cars at the current rate of growth within the next five years, it's gonna be over a million cars. 
It is the biggest problem in the entire United States. What we're talking about here so far is just inter-valley things, but we have a no. huge problem between the valley and west valley. No, we, I appreciate that. In fact, the 405 Transit Reliever Project, as it's called, envisioned a connection, a tunnel that would go from the Van Nuys Civic Center, where the Orange Line stop is, to the UCLA subway stop, stop at UCLA, and then the, the Wilshire subway stop, uh, to connect that area. Top deck mass transit vehicles, bottom deck were hot lanes, toll lanes, to pay for the project. And one of the things Dev voted for, and I voted for before we, while we were still on the MTA board, was to move that project from the last project to the next project, did it in December of 2012. So, agree with everything Zev said about the need. There is a program, there's an idea on how to do that. And we're working with Metro, we'll work with Metro to see what we can do to accelerate that. We thought we had. This generation. Yes, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand completely. Yeah, define this generation. <laughs> yeah. That's be 40 years from now. I've been waiting to come to Bur back to Burbank. We've had Jess already, but just because you guys have more people here. But Emily Gable, who's a city councilwoman in Burbank, and David Gordon, also a city councilman in Burbank, want to get their perspectives, but particularly Emily, because Emily has a dis another distinction, other than having known me for longer than she'd admit to, but she was very involved and one of the major innovators back when the LA City Department of Planning did innovation. She hasn't been there for years, and I think we know the results, but Emily has a unique perspective, having been a planner, as well as a transportation expert, and now a council member, so, I'd like to turn it to Emily and to Dr. Gordon. Get your perspective, please. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> I think I've known Zev longer than I've known you, but uh, we all started with you know regular color hair, and now it's all gray and white. Um, well, I, I have to say I, I agree with everyone who's, who's shared their observations earlier. I, I think that what I heard was we have to be on the same team. Um, what, what was new to me, though, was this, that uh, uh, it's, it hasn't been for several years a commute issue. It really is a non-commute issue. Traffic, transportation, and congestion. Um, and I like the fact that the Pacoima Neighborhood Council representative talked about 24-hour service. It's very challenging, but I think it's worth putting into the mix of the conversation. Um, I'm sure Dr. Gordon will talk more about Burbank. I just want to say that I'd like to see the red line extended to the Burbank Airport. <laughs> We have two Metrolink stations there already, north and south of the airport property. It has become and will continue to be a regional hub for the San Fernando Valley. And for those of you who are concerned about the Burbank Airport getting too modern, uh, we, we are talking about and we have talked about making sure that you can still get off the back of the plane when you fly back from Phoenix <laughs> or from Albuquerque or from San Jose. That's a very important aspect of the operations at that airport. So. We are in discussions. Uh, we're having a big discussion tomorrow night at our council about uh, proposals um, in conjunction with the airport authority. Uh, th there are just a couple of other things besides incrementalism, um, and I think, Zev, you, you touched on that very well, talking about the evolution of the Wilshire Boulevard bus system. Um, uh, the other thing is what Paul said from from City of LA was looking at multiple benefits. So for concerns about reducing greenhouse gases, it always pays to look at multiple benefits of any um, transit system. And then, then finally, I'm just going to put back on my old urban design hat here for a moment and say that it's been a cause for me in Burbank and I think in many of the communities here where the bus shelters and the, the notification to riders who are waiting um, letting them know what's coming beyond the app, because you saw from the video, not every person who rides a bus is going to have one of these cute little iPhones. Um, that experience should be as cool and as sheltered as possible, so that while you're waiting for the bus, <laughs> you are protected from the rain and from the sun. And one of the things that I think uh, we could improve on is, is that kind of urban design approach for our riders, whether they're students, getting out at 10 o'clock at night, or they're older people who are no longer driving, or they're recent immigrants, or they're people who just can't afford to go any other way. It has to, we, have, we need a higher commitment to making that as rewarding experience as possible. Finally, 
when I did the uh, set up the urban design studio in the city of Los Angeles, I worked with the Tarzana Neighborhood Association. I think we have a representative here today. And I would like to say that I'd like to hear more from the neighborhood associations because they're on the, in fact, I think they should be sitting here at the table. Um, they're on the ground, they hear the day to day. We're sort of at the policy level, but there's no substitute from hearing from them. And in my experience in the past, Wow, some of them had really great ideas and worked very hard. And since those are the voters that we're going to uh, on a future ballot measure, I hope that we can hear more from them before we leave this afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gordon. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here, David Gordon, Burbank City Council. I see many friends that I've known for many years, um, but I haven't spoke much in transportation issues couple of things that are very impressive to me today and I think need to be common. Dr. Guerra uh, brought up some statistics and your questions had to do with, I believe, good, fair, and poor. I didn't see the question excellent. I believe your numbers would be tremendously skewed if you ask, is this excellent service? I believe we can deliver excellent transportation service and should. For someone who grew up in the West Valley, El Camino Real High School, when it was a new school, and then in Burbank, uh, is my home for many years now, um, and having lived and worked in Europe, Asia, and been to uh, Central America, I've seen transportation systems in Paris, but I lived and walked, and I also have seen transportation systems in El Salvador, different part of the world, and I've seen transportation systems here. I can't tell you how many times I've driven across the Ventura Freeway, but I mainly stay uh, in the Burbank area. A few things about Burbank. At the risk of mentioning high-speed rail, uh, we've received a $1.4 million station area planning grant because for better or worse, we've been targeted for a station for high-speed rail. And this is an opportunity. And I, I do, I've heard words today about economics. I think transportation, regardless of the cost, is very closely linked to economic power and opportunity for a future. And with respect to Burbank, and our friends in Glendale also have concerns about this. We have an opportunity now, if we're smart, all of us, and strive for excellence rather than just good, we can, at least in Burbank, have the potential for an inter-valley hub, east, west, north, south, which incorporates all the great ideas I've heard today. And I'm sorry, uh, with all due respect, silver bullets are great ideas. They have that concept in medicine, penicillin, one time was thought to be silver bullet, but I go for some copper-coated bullets and lots of them, okay? Because I think we need a lot of different approaches to address all of these issues. And as far as energy, I'm getting the gray hair too. I'm getting tired. I'm willing to fight for our community and as an integrated region to make sure we work on uh, transportation. This weekend, have all the brilliant ideas about economics, but we have people, we have businesses in Burbank leaving because their good employees for good jobs can't get there. And Burbank is not an underprivileged community. But big businesses are taking jobs and leaving because they can't, their employees can't get to us. And I'll leave you with that. And I will work very hard to help anyone and everyone who improves the transportation in our valley. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much. David, thank you very much. Let's, let's just do a couple more folks here. And what we want to do to everybody who's here, because a lot of people are raising their hands, is to, and also to get up on the board. Uh, you know, the real here is it, the, the idea is to expand and really have the outreach from all communities across the valley. Calabasas is here, wants to talk, Dennis Washburn, the first mayor, and others, and quickly get rapid fire input that we can add up on the board and help lay the framework and then begin to prioritize for the next meeting in conjunction with VICA, with the COG, and all of the other partners, all of whom are working together to try to figure out how we can uh, you know, speak with one voice. And if you do have to leave, just real quickly, as, as an appreciation for everybody who took time, got here early, and stayed for this long thing. We got gift bags for everybody. David's got to speak to, but we got gift bags for everybody on your way out. Just some fun stuff, because we all know everybody likes gift bags. <laughs> Especially Hertzberg. Now, <laughs> but also, you know, the maps you have, put your routes on the map, so put your route on the map, the large map up there, because that's all data we're going to collect. And we'll talk about that in a second. First, I want to get Bern, Bren, I, we, we had this conversation. I'd like to get Bren from Climate Resolve to speak, Mel Wilson, and then their councilman. But then we also want to hear from the neighborhood councils who are here in the audience and get your ideas up on the board. 
Good morning. Happy to be here today. Uh, I'm I'm part of an organization called Climate Resolve, and we are part of a larger coalition of over 65 organizations called Enviro Metro um, that is forming around trying to trying to inform, trying to influence um, Measure R2 to be more forward-looking, to not just continue business as usual. Um, so we're wanting we're wanting decisions for where that money is spent to be based on where the need is, um, how we can have biggest impact in reducing vehicle miles traveled, reducing greenhouse gases, um, taking this recognition that that Metro, you know, it hasn't been in its core mandate to address greenhouse gases, but the transportation sector is emitting 40% of our, of our emissions, and it, it's, it's time to address that. Um, so, so we're wanting to set real targets. Uh, we think we don't need to just accept this identity of LA being a, a car-centric city with horrible congestion forever. Um, we, can, we can shed that. Uh, the young, new generation is looking um, to have different sort of mobility patterns. Um, are often seeing cars more of a burden um, than, a, than a vehicle for liberation. Um, so we just would like to encourage um, not only setting targets and sort of moving in that more transformative um, direction as opposed to sort of doing band-aids and just um, patching up the um, system we have, but, uh, but also to, to consider integrating um, different sort of infrastructure planning considerations, such as urban heat island effect. Um, we've got a lot of asphalt that's contributing towards warming our city, it makes it much less pleasant for people waiting at transit stops. Um, consider stormwater management. With climate change, we're seeing flashier precipitation. Um, and so it, it doesn't really make sense to be putting in infrastructure that then we realize a few years down the road we need to retrofit um, to better meet our our stormwater needs. Um, so if, uh, if anyone would like to get involved, we do have a web page um, and are, are looking to... Envirometro.org. Envirometro.org. Let's put that up on the board, envirometro.org. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wilson? Yes. MTA board member, valley activist, troublemaker in the best sense of the word. Yes. Long time buddy. Thank you. I'm going to stand up so I can get, make some eye contact with some of you who are sitting towards the back. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank Senator Hertzberg. Where'd you go? Right here. Thank you, the Alliance. Thank you, uh, Vika, thank you. And for all the homeowners and neighborhood groups who came out, and not just today, but you've been advocates for a long period of time. I know many of us, as I look around the room, uh, Ross and I, we had all black hair, and now we have all great hair, right? right. That's how long we've been around. And uh, I just wanted to no point, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I want to just probe you a little bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you see what I mean? I think what we need to do really is we need to ask the right questions. We need to ask the right questions. And, and I don't hear a lot of the right questions being asked right now. Equity. The question is, do we have equity? Is it OK for kids to be at home when their parents are riding the bus for two hours, these latchkey kids who get into trouble. Is that okay? Is it okay that we don't have transit dependency as a part of the mechanism for deciding where dollars are invested? Is that okay? Is it okay to not look at the social impacts of our transit dollars? I think we need to start asking these kinds of questions because I don't hear those kind of questions being asked. I hear things like, there are five projects underway now, rail projects, and I would ask, how many of them are in the valley? None. <laughs> those are the kind of questions I'd be asking, and I don't think we're asking enough of those kinds of questions. I'm a business guy. I've been involved in the community for a long, long time. And I have seen a lot of, of these kind of conferences, but at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, where has the money gone? I sat on the MTA board under two different administrations. Under the first one, Prop A and Prop C had already been a done deal. On the second one, Measure R was already a done deal. 
So all I could do is work with the folks that were here, many of them around this room here, and I applaud you for your efforts, but we were stuck with that stinking map. And if we get a map that does not reflect what our needs are, shame on us. That's what I say. We need to think about productivity and how much of it is lost for people riding on the 405 freeway. How much economic output is lost from people who are unable to get from point A to point B to point C. I have ridden the 761 bus all the way from Van Nuys Boulevard in Nordoff to the 720 on Westwood Boulevard and Wilshire Boulevard. It took it over an hour. And who was riding it? Housekeepers, hotel workers. Is that equity? Should they have to ride that long and be away from their kids that long in order for them to get a decent job? <coughs> Ask yourself, is that OK? I think that we need to think about the future. We know the past is behind us. We can't change it. But there is a lot ahead for us in the future. And it's up to us to change it. Yeah, I want to support a Measure R2. But if that map is not right, no way, Jose. That's what I say. The map has to reflect equity, but it also has to reflect productivity, <coughs> economic output, emissions reduction. These are the kind of things that this map needs to reflect. And when I looked at the Measure R, and I know a lot about the Long Range Plan, and I know a lot about Measure R, and I will tell you, when I saw that we have two stations, two subway stations, we have a bus rapid transit. How come it's OK for everybody else to get rail that has great separation, and for us to get stuck with a bunch of buses that have to stop at every traffic light? Why is that OK? To me, it's not. So I'm sorry to kind of it's a new day. ruffle the feathers. It's a new the, day. The map the is not drawn. I just think that we need to look at this. And we don't need to get mad. We need to be smart. We need to rally our forces together. We have 15% of the population for the whole county. That is a lot. We have 23% of the tax base in this county. That's a lot. What are we doing with it? Where did our money go? We have $10, $11 billion invested, two rail stations, an orange line. That's what we have to show for it. To me, you know, we need to look at and start asking the right questions. And I'm going to put it to everyone who's around this table. I love you guys. But we can't fold the tent. We have to stand up and fight for what's right for the businesses, for the homeowners, for the workers. We need to stand up and, and stop bending over and being nice. And, and Mel, the new guy at the table is, is uh, Councilman David Rue, and we are going to look to his strong back. <laughs> his strong <laughs> back, David, Lastly, to lead us. a couple of projects. Connectivity. Quickly. We're forgetting about our friends in the North County. Palmdale, Lancaster, Santa Clarita, they're all transit dependent. If we had a project that started at the Silmar Metrolink station, went down Van Nuys Boulevard, all the way down to the Orange Line. We have lots of property in the Orange Line. Underneath the 405 freeway to the, to the Wilshire Corridor, our veterans would have access. Our kids who are good students would have access to UCLA. All our workers who are the nurses and the other folks could have access to the Wilshire Corridor, Century City. All those folks would have access to the San Fernando Valley and vice versa instead of being stuck on the freeway. So I think that we need to think about this project. We need to think about what we're doing here. We need to ask the right questions. Thank you, Mr. Hertzberg. As I said, always fighting the right fight.